Well, I think we found a magic stick here, so <laughs> let's keep working with it. What a beautiful fish. Oh, that was dandy. As <sighs> just as the sun's going over the hill, that's yeah. just amazing. Good timing. We got, yeah, let's get a couple more. Good job, yeah. though, fighting them, too. <laughs> he must, it would have looked like coming up. You see oh, the take and everything? Jaws, oh, jaws, yeah. It, it looked like a good fish. That's great. Is that a typical? That's, that's above typical. That would be, if we had two of those in a day, in a full day, that'd be a good day, with a probably 20 other eights and twelves. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 some, that's what we're looking for out here. Especially this time of year. <clears throat> when Greg's not attending to other business, guiding, or with the family, he's in the fly shop, often at his fly tying vice. Tying a uh, lightning bug here that we use in the Metho and uh, using some heavier wire uh, hooks than usual. Um, the larger fish in here seem to really enjoy these uh, during the day. So when you're hooking a larger fish, a lot of times a smaller wire will, will break off. So using a larger wire and uh, flashy tinsel material for the tail. And uh, Speed head. A little bead head on it, and it's got a couple stages to the body, uh, running the t uh, this tinsel around. <clears throat> These curved hooks are always difficult sometimes to get your material where you want it, but the curvature itself is uh, is what really gives this fly a lot of natural look to it. This is going to be the thorax here coming up and get about halfway and I leave the little red stripe on there. <clears throat> One of the fun things about fly tying for me is going to uh, like holiday stores and finding material. This one here <laughs> happens to be the classic Christmas icicles that you put on your, your, uh, your tree. I think you know tying tying flies with new materials is it's really fun and it's inventive and it gives the fish something different to look at in the water than the the regular flies that are being sold in the valley. And uh, what's neat about living here is we do get to hunt and we have a large uh, group of people that raise peacocks here. So during the during the the season, we're always getting peacock feathers coming into the shop. So. Um, <clears throat> one of the standards for, for tying. Take two of, uh, two of the peacock curls, <clears throat> and now I'm going to be doing uh, part of the thorax coming up. Can you tie in the stems first? I tied in, yeah, the, the back ends of the stems. There's two pieces here. I sometimes put three in depending on the size. And I like using these dubbing um, or this hackle tool to hold my material in place. What's the joy you get out of tying your own fly? The joy that I get from tying flies comes from pretty much losing myself in the fly as I tie it. Um, People talk about, you know, why do you tie, you know, is it necessary, and do you tie all your own flies, and for me, it's a place to just kind of let go for a minute and relax, and um, I just get to focus on what I like to call, and David Dun uh, Duncan called in a movie once, little puppets that we tie for the, for the, uh, <clears throat> the fish. And another friend of mine said, <clears throat> I tied a really ugly fly one time. And I said, well, they don't care. They'll, they'll hit it anyways. And he said, you've got to be respectful of the fish. So I kind of took that to heart a bit. <clears throat> and so when I tie, I always think about how lucky I am to be a, a fly fisherman here in the valley. And tying more, you know, taking my time with each fly and making it look respectable for me is kind of the satisfaction. And also consistency. If I can tie 
the fly 50 or 60 times, same way every time. For me, that's, that's what it's about, having that consistent bug in the repertoire. Well, using a streamer knot uh, with the streamer, and that allows for the streamer to swim more naturally. <clears throat> um, also, during the retrieves, you know, some people like to streamer fish uh, and let, let it sink and let the current do the work for you. Here, I like to, I like to actually, I like to actually start moving the streamer as soon as it hits the water in small little three-inch strips coming back in. Mm -hmm. And then to make it not look like a robot, I like to stop every once in a while. Almost like a fish taking a rest for a second. Ooh, did you yeah. see that? Sure did. I should put on a dry fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the fourth rise I've seen recently. They're starting to come up. See that one? Yep. Ooh, ooh, they're all this. over. They're just turning on right now. Oh, that's him. That's on the nymph. <laughs> that's on the nymph. I'm just going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to learn. I'm going to try to learn something here. more typical. Yeah, rainbow. Uh, this is a little more average size. A lot of spunk uh, size here. But whoop. Yeah. Let's take a look at your rig and make sure it's all golden. Yeah, lightning bug looks great. Okay. okay. All right. Let's. You saw them. Nice. Right <laughs> they were just going like popcorn. I know. Just coming up left and right. So. Mm -hmm. 